I'm going to preach this morning. I want to preach out of Job, Job 26. In verse 7, it says, he's talking about God. He said, he spreads out the northern skies over empty space. He suspends the earth over nothing. He wraps up the waters in his clouds, and yet the clouds do not burst under their weight. He covers the face of the full moon, spreading his clouds over it. He marks out the horizon on the face of the waters and the boundary between light and darkness. The pillars of the heavens quake against his rebuke. His power, he has churned up the sea, but his wisdom, he has cut Rahab to pieces. His breath, the skies become fair. His hand pierced the the gliding serpent. And these are but the outer fringe of his works. How faint the whisper we hear of him. Who then can understand the thunder of his power? So what I want to preach today for just a minute or two is what I have entitled, I talked to God today. I talked to God today and I talked to him about God. Okay. Let me ask you, have you talked to God lately? Just good old conversation. I know we're, I know we're pretty good at asking about things when we pray. I know we talk to God and we pray. I know we're pretty good about asking God for things. I know that. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, some of the things I know we pray for, Lord, give me strength to get through this day. I've prayed this one, Lord, help me not to be fired today. Lord, give me patience in this traffic jam. Here's one. You ever prayed this one? Lord, help me not to run out of gas. Forgive me for not... I think of Sally Ginch every time I get low, because she always told me, Matt, you never know when you're going to need to get somewhere. Keep your tank at least at half full or half empty, one of the two. And uh, I've prayed that. Lord, please, I know... The light's beeping at me, but I'm on. I'm doing your work, right? Here's, here's why I think I'm going to say, instead of saying, I'm praying for you, here's what I think I'm going to say instead. I'm going to talk to God about you today. You know why I'm going to do that? It's because this whole, and, and, and again, if you say it, that's okay, because I know you have a good heart, but this whole thoughts and prayers thing, And that can be coming a little cliche. Keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. You know what I want to know? You know what I I want to know? I want to know the percentage of people who say, you are in my thoughts and prayers. I want to know the percentage of the people who actually pray. What do you think it is? 10%? Five? Five? Who Who actually... Pray when they say, I'll keep you in my thoughts and prayers. I saw this, and I don't know if this, I just saw it on the internet. Uh, it, was a, it was a weatherman in Florida. Did you see this? It said, be careful. Keep, keep people in Florida in your thoughts and prayers because it's going to get down to 55 degrees. <laughs> and it said, don't go outside for long periods of time. <laughs> so this Wednesday when it's one pray for your friends in Florida because it's going to be 55 and they shouldn't be outside for long periods of time thoughts and prayers okay I've decided instead I'm going to start saying you know I talked to God today about you and you came up in our conversation I just think it sounds more serious like it's real okay okay I talked to God about God. Here's some things I found out about God that I want to share with you today, okay? I'm going to use some fancy words here. You ready for a fancy word? Who's ready for a fancy word? You seem kind of in the doldrums today. I got to get you going here today. Uh, God is, God is um, omniscient. I like that one. God is omniscient. Anybody know what I'm talking about? God is omniscient. It really looks like omniscience. If you spell it, it looks like omniscience. And I didn't know that's how you said it. I've, I've been saying omniscience for a long time. It's omniscient. <laughs> Mickey apparently knows what omniscient means. Um, it means all-knowing. You, God knows everything. Jesus said when he was here on earth, you know what he said? You know what he said, Dennis? The very hairs on your head are counted. 
Do you know the number? It's less than mine, but... <laughs> Zach, God, Jesus, if he were here, he could give you a number and say exactly what your beautiful head of hair, the number on it. You impressed by that? Some of us, our numbers, me and Andrew, our numbers are going down every day. <laughs> but that's okay because we're still good looking. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. God knows exactly how many hairs you have on the top of your hair. God knows, God knows everything. Okay, he knows everything. And I know we tend to take that in the negative way. We tend to say, oh, oh, God knows everything. You better watch it. Hey, you better watch it. <laughs> God, God, God knows everything. God knows it all. God saw you take that pen out of that torpedo thing that they shoot up at the bank. For your deposits, he saw you take that pen out of there. God saw you leave that cheap tip the other night at the restaurant. God saw you. Oh, I hate when people do this. If you do this, you need to repent. God saw you at the gas station pull up to a pump even though you weren't getting gas. And you went in and got cigarettes. He saw you do that. And I had to wait for a pump because you stole the pump in front of me and you didn't even pump gas. God saw that. My brother, when he lived in Fairview Heights, remember the Ryan Steakhouse over in Fairview Heights? Had to boot, had to buffet on Sundays. He knew the manager and the manager said, oh, Joel, you're never going to believe it. He goes, the people come in here with the purses. They line their purses with aluminum foil. And steal the food off the buffet. They line their purses with. If your purse is lined with foil today, shame on all of you. <laughs> and he said, "You know what, Joel? The worst part about it is it's the church crowd. <laughs> the church crowd are the biggest thieves that come here. God sees it. God sees it." God, let's go positive instead. You want to do that? Should I go positive? Let's go positive. God knows all of your yesterdays, but he knows, guess what? He knows your tomorrows. God knows your yesterdays, but he also knows your tomorrows. He knows what tomorrow holds. You know what? God has already been to your tomorrows. He already knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He's already been there and he already sees what's going on. And because of that, what he can do is he can prepare us for what's coming. Anybody worried about tomorrow? Who's worried about tomorrow? Wow, nobody. Good. Dennis is worried about tomorrow. I'm really picking on him today, aren't I? I shouldn't do that, but it's okay. It's your, this is your present. Um, If you could see his face right now, it's priceless. It's priceless. <laughs> if you're worried about tomorrow, think of this. God is already there. He's already in your tomorrow. He already knows what tomorrow holds. He already knows what's going to happen tomorrow. So, so here's the thing. Here's the thing, and I lost my place, so I'm just going to keep rambling. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry. He's already been there. He already knows what's going to happen. In fact, he's waiting for you to show up. I, I, had, I had a terrible week this week of visiting people, uh, with visiting really sad visits. And my prayer was, Lord, please give me strength as I go to each visit and visit each person. And somebody pointed this out to me. They said, you know what, Matt? God's already there. God's already. Hey, get this, little Russell. God's already in the surgery room. <laughs> God's already at the doctor's office. God's already at the unemployment line. God's already there. He's just waiting for you to show up. He knows your tomorrows. He knows your yesterdays and all the chicken you stole, but he knows your tomorrows. God is waiting for you in your tomorrows, okay? He already knows what's going to happen. Oh, did, you ever have, did you ever have one of those moments where you just knew it was God? Yes, uh, what day was it? Tuesday. I'm sitting in my office and I'm thinking to myself, I, I, I'm going to go visit Bill Lady. He's over at rehab at Oak Hill. And uh, so, I don't know, I'm just sitting there 
And I looked on my wall, and there's my old assembly, my old Pentecostal assembly got licensed. I'm just thinking about all my old Pentecostal friends, and, and this one guy popped in my head, Paul Pinta, popped in my head. He was the pastor that I served under years ago. I did an internship under Paul Pinta, and I just thought of Paul. He passed away, and I thought, I wonder if his wife's still alive. Her name was D. Her real name was Dolores, called her D. I thought, I wonder if D is still alive. I wonder where she's at or how she's doing. And so, I don't know, she's popped in my head. I'm thinking about her. And I even went to the old obituaries to look up when Paul passed and all some old friends. So I thought, well, I'll go see Bill Lady. And so I'm walking in the rehab area there. And, and on the, by the doors, they have the little name slots for their names of the people in the room. I'm walking down the hall. I turn to my left and I look. And they're on the wall. Dolores Pinta. She's there at the rehab center. And I was just thinking about her 10 minutes ago and looking her up on the internet. God already knew Floyd that I was going there. And he decided, I'm going to fill Matt in on this because I know his tomorrows. I know what he did yesterday, but I know what he's doing tomorrow. And because he knows our tomorrows, he's already there waiting for us. In our tomorrows. Does that make you feel better about tomorrow? God's already there. Don't worry about it. He's already there. Now, somebody asked me one time, I'm going to throw this back on you, okay? Somebody said, what's God like? You know, you know, somebody might, somebody might come up to you and say, oh yeah, you know, you go to church. I know you're a believer. You believe in God. You all believe in God, right? All of you. We're at 100%, right? <laughs> Good. Someone might, somebody, someday, somebody might come up to you and say, you know, I heard you're a believer. That's really good. Can you, since you believe in God and I, I'm not sure, can you tell me about God? Can you describe God to me? Could you do it? Could you do it? Because we all do that, right? If we, if we find out somebody knows Something about, we find out somebody knows somebody that we're, that, that's kind of interesting. What do we say? What are they really like in real life? You know, I know people say that about me. All, What's Matt like in real life? What's, he's just as goofy as he is on Sundays as he is on Mondays, okay? <laughs> right here, this is how I act. Every, ask Laura, this is how I act every day. I'm just not as loud. <laughs> I'm just not as loud. So the question is, then, what is God like? Describe God. Is he nice? Is he nice? Is he mean? Is he... What, just describe God for me. So here's a couple things. Here's a couple things of, of interest. Number one, God doesn't have birthdays. I know we had, what, 16 birthdays today? God doesn't have birthdays. Okay, we did this Wednesday night. We're going to do it this morning. Ready to wrap your heads around something? Wrap your head around this. God always existed. There was never a time when God did not exist. Can you wrap your brain around that? Never, there was never a time ever when God was not in existence. God always existed. God doesn't have birthdays because he was never born. God always was. He's eternal. He's eternal. He's ageless. And I'm not talking Betty White ageless. I'm talking... (laughs) That woman's got to be 140 years old. 97? Good for her. God is ageless, but not like Betty White. God is ageless in the sense that he has no age. Betty White's 97. I met a lady at the New Athens Nursing Home the other day, 101. And she was as crazy and fiery as 90. Um, (laughs) Merle, you're going to be 94. Five. Good for you. And you're still making me feel good. You're awesome. You know you're going to have to live to be 140 just to keep me going, right? (laughs) God is ageless in the sense that he has no age. He always 
existed. I've done this before. Debbie Carolise, don't answer this because I think you answered it last time. I did this a long time ago. I'm a, you know, we always are obsessed with age and how, how long we're here and all these things. Let me ask you these questions, okay? Can you, can you name who your grandpa is? Can you name who your great-grandpa is? Can you name who your great-great-grandpa is? Or grandma. Let's not be sexist here. Most of you can't, right? Most of you, most of you can't name who your great-great-grandparents were. Would you agree? Well, you, Debbie, you don't count. <laughs> most of you, I can't. So you know what that means? Three generations, no one's going to remember us. Oh, ouch. How could they forget us? How could they forget us? Three generations, most people will not even remember we were here. God, on the other hand, will never be forgotten because God always was, God always is, and God always will be. Okay, here's the last one. God is omnipotent. That means all-powerful. In Genesis, the Bible says in Genesis, he created the world. You know how he created it? He spoke it. He spoke it into being. That's hard for, that's hard for me to get. I, you know, I don't struggle with it. I believe it, but it's hard for me to get because I'm used to, like, for instance, Dennis, again, but this is good. <laughs> Dennis draws the plans for the house, but he orders the wood from the lumber company. Chuck and I pour the concrete. Chuck and I pour the foundation and the concrete. Roger comes along and builds the house. That's the process. Okay? That's the process. God doesn't need any of those steps. God speaks the worlds into being. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God said, let there be a sun, and there was a sun. God, let, God said, let there be stars, and he flung his hand, and there were stars. That's power. We can't create that way, can we? We have to have something. In other words, we can't take nothing and make it into something. I mean, we can, we can take a bunch of junk from the refrigerator and make mulligan stew out of it, but the junk was in the refrigerator. God doesn't need the refrigerator or the junk. He can make it. He speaks things into being. He is all-powerful. God can do anything. But watch this. Because he's a good God, there are things that he can do, but then there are things he chooses not to do. Okay? That's why, and I've noticed you're all here today. Uh, you know, nobody apparently won the lottery or whatever. That's why when you... I'm, I'm going to break some hearts here, but... That's why when you pray and ask God for lottery numbers, that's why you don't get them. Because if he gives you the lottery numbers and you win, that's not fair to the rest of the people who played, is it? Not fair. God is all powerful in the sense he can do anything, but he won't do everything because he's just. When I was back in high school, I prayed, oh my goodness, I pray over my algebra test. I'd pray over it. Mr. Wacker would hear me praying, Oh, God, have mercy. <laughs> God never, can I tell you this? God never gave me one answer to one problem in algebra. You know why? Because Matt was too busy squirrel hunting and goofing around instead of studying. And God is a just God, and God's not going to cheat for me. He's not going to cheat and give me the answers. That's not what God does. Okay? God is good, God is fair, and he is righteous. Now, I'll close with this. There's something that's bothered me for a while. And it's, it, I've, I've tried to wrap my, my brain around it, and here's what it is. Is that in the Bible, I love the Bible stories where God intervenes and crazy, miraculous things happen. The Israelites are fleeing from the Egyptians. They get to the Red Sea, and God parts the Red Sea, and they walk on dry ground. That'd be like us going down to the Mississippi, and all of a sudden God parts it, and all of a sudden we're over in South County. Pretty cool. I love the Bible stories when God slays the giants, and God 
brings miracles and, and, and all kinds of things like that happen. I, I've always wished the pages of the Bible would come alive today and God would intervene just like he did thousands of years ago. So my question that I've had for God and what I've talked to God about is, is that where's the power gone? Where did it go? Why aren't we seeing these things anymore? Why doesn't God do what he did years ago? Why doesn't he do it today? The only answer I can come up with is this, is that 2,000 years ago, God used the greatest power he had to do the greatest thing God has ever done, and that is to raise Jesus from the dead. God did the greatest miracle and exuded the greatest amount of power when he raised Jesus from the dead. And when we believe in him and what he did for us, we'll have eternal life. And here's what God did in his greatest power, and he did it by speaking it into being, is that he created a place way better than we have here. A place where evil and sickness and death will not be allowed. And where God has, God has used his real power He's used it. Carlos and I went to church years, years ago at a little Pentecostal church in Waterloo. That's where Carlos and I met years ago. And we worshiped together. We sang together. We, we praised God together. And Carlos, had, you know, when, when he started coming here, when I found out he was ill, I thought to myself, why doesn't God heal Carlos? Why doesn't God make Carlos better? God's got all this power. Why doesn't he... Just make Carlos better, and I don't know why, and I have no answers for why, but the only answer I have is this, is God used his power to raise Jesus from the dead, and he's made a place for him, and for Lucille, and for all the other people that we've lost, he's made a way better place than this place here, and that's the only thing we have, is hope. God used his power to give us hope. Let's pray. Father, we are, we are grateful for hope. There's times when I've asked, Father, why, you know, all the power you have, why can't you just do this or why can't you just do that? And we really don't have the answer. But the answer I do have is that you certainly did use your power to make a way better place than we live down here. So, Father, we are grateful for, your all, for, your, for the knowledge that you have of tomorrow and the knowledge that you have forever and ever. And that's what we pray for, Father. We talk to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.